All right, Ravens fans, let's let's calm down. First question came from my guy, Kev Pro. He said, let's calm down. It's week two going into week three. The Ravens are 1-1. One and one, The Bengals are 0-2. Oh the good news is it's week two. Uh, there have been countless sky is falling moments in years past, and the Ravens have been just fine. How about the 34-20 loss to the Chiefs in week three of 2020? Uh, or the 40-25 loss to the Browns in week four uh, of 2019? Both seasons ended with the Ravens in the playoffs. But both seasons also ended with the Ravens out the playoffs. But I do see what you're saying. I do what you say, see, see what you're saying because it is still super early. And that's the same thing we said on here. It is very early, but you got to understand where a lot of people are coming from. Because while the Ravens are one and one, and there are a lot of positives to take from the game, of course. There are a lot of negatives to take from the game, of course, too. And you can really say that about any game. But when it comes to what the issues were, the biggest issues, it's a lot of the same stuff. That's why I think a lot of people are frustrated and worried. And I know a lot of times when, whenever the Ravens lose, or really any team loses, but specifically in this case the Ravens, whenever the Ravens lose, a lot of stuff starts getting blown out of proportion. A lot of people just, they get super heated and, and, and stuff just can go crazy, which I get. I, I see it all the time. It is what it is. But a lot of people keep pointing out that a lot of what's going on is a lot of the same stuff. One of the things, the Ravens this year, so far, it's been only two games, but uh, they, they're actually a passing team right now. They're a passing team. But they, um, the run blocking has just been really bad. It's, it's been really bad. But last year, when they had all these injuries to the offensive line, um, that's how it was last year. They just they, they couldn't run the ball. They couldn't do it. And, um, and I don't know. Again, it's only been two games. But it almost seems like the run blocking to me in these first two games. Like, y'all, let, please let me know if I'm wrong. And I know y'all will. But um, it almost seems to me like the run blocking in these first two games is worse than what it was last year. It was wor and, and last year, they weren't prepared for life without Ronnie Stanley. I mean, they had him for that first game, but um, they didn't have him for the second game. It just felt like the, the running was better last year. And it, it, again, only two games so tough. So you could put it against the Jets and the Dolphins versus the Raiders and the Chiefs last year. But, and again, completely different years, but still, this year... They were supposed to be going into this season like, all right, we know Ronnie Stanley got his issues and whatever. Let's have a little backup plan or whatnot. That, of course, was Patrick McCary. Uh, that was Jawan James. Um, but, yeah. So, I mean, it almost seems like it's worse this year. But um, that's, that's a repeat issue that they dealt with all last season. They dealt with that all last season. Even though, again, they still got some decent runs last year, but it was still uh, rough. So, with them getting some decent runs, or really just the run game not being what it what they normally what what they're used to it being normally. Um, last year they they were passing a lot. This year, same thing, same thing. Now, I ain't complaining about the passing game at all. I've been loving it, loving it, uh, because again, it's it, it's been on point. It's been on point. Now, um, another thing too. That has been an issue, situational play caller. That's been a repeat issue, situational play caller. Now, we, uh, of course, remember the drive where um, there's some drives where, hey, g Rose, like, what are you doing? Then there's some drives where it's like, oh, Ravens players, what are y'all doing? It, it just, it, sometimes it's on both. Now, you go to that, that, that drive where the Ravens, they got that, that long 50-minute drive, it felt like. They on the goal line. Lamar Jackson, he fumbles the ball. That ain't on G-Row at all. That's on Lamar. That ain't on G-Row. That's all on Lamar. He fumbled the ball. So, oh, here we go. He fumbled the ball. Oh, man. Thank goodness they recovered it, though. And then, uh, then they got stopped. They got stopped short. And I, uh, I know a lot of people were like, oh, they, they should have took the field goal. And, I mean, looking back at it, like, I, me personally, I didn't have any problem with any of the fourth downs that they went for. I didn't have a problem with them going for it on fourth down any of the times they went for it on fourth down in the game. I had zero problem with it. Because y'all know, like, I, I would tell you, like, if, if I didn't think they should have went for it, I would be like, no, kick that field goal. 
But there were people who felt like they should have kicked, kicked the field goal. And I mean, looking back at it, you could be, oh, yeah. They, and some people felt like that, uh, not even just in hindsight, but in foresight. Some people felt like, hey, in the moment, no, Ravens, take the points. Take the points. Because that's something that in, in different games and whatnot, sometimes it, this come back to bite them when they don't take the points. Um, especially like I definitely in that 2019 season in that playoff game, uh, not taking the points, it came back to bite them. Uh, even though, the, again, the aggression it's the greed. It's, uh, it's, it's tough to deny it. It's tough to push it to the side. Like when you're right, there, especially when you're right there, you did this long drive. You don't had the ball forever. It's like, you, you don't want to do all that for no three points. But then it was later on in the, um, was it the fourth quarter? Or was it late in the third quarter? It was, it was in the second half where they had another opportunity to, um, to kick a field goal, but they went for it and they didn't get it. So two turnovers on downs. But um, so that, the first turnover on downs, that's execution. That was on the players. Uh, but the second turnover on downs, um, it just, I, 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 I hated the sequence of play calling. I thought the situation of play calling was really bad. And that has been an issue that we've been talking about on here for years. And I think that's another reason why people are, are very frustrated. Because, again, repeat offenders. Ravens being repeat offenders. And with people, uh, th their, their frustrations, they don't go unnoticed. Um, but because... And I know it's only been two games, but if you're seeing the Ravens be repeat offenders already with some of the same issues, it's like, oh, man, are they going to be start? Are they gonna start doing that early? And I know some people look at it like, well, rather than do it now than later. But is this a sign of things to come? We won't know till we know. But you, you just you don't want it to be. But hopefully it can be one of those things like, all right, Ravens did it early in the season and they they adjusted. They fixed stuff. And they, 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 they got rid of that. They got better from it. But, again, back to the situation of play calling. Um, the, the drive we just talked about, that was all on Lamar. That was on the run blocking. That, that was all on the players. But in that other drive where it was a turnover on downs, um, the third down, Lamar kept it. I thought that was a good play call. Good, they set it up good and nice and everything. But then on the fourth down, um, I just – I knew they weren't running the ball with Lamar again. I was like, no way. They, they, they're passing it for sure. Nope. They didn't. They didn't. They did a QB keeper with him again, back to back, and it was just blatantly obvious. And it's like, what are they doing? What are they doing? So it's like the, um, they're just, it's weird, man, because Greg Roman, Overall, in the Dolphins game, he had a pretty good game. He had a very good game. Very good game. And then he was pulling out some of that 20% plays. He was pulling out stuff from the vault. The Mark Andrews sneak. Like, what? I ain't never seen nothing like that. I, I never a, a tight end come and sneak. What? Okay. I, I, I like it. I like it. Because it, it just came out of nowhere. And it, it was unexpected. Then the Dolphins were like, oh, okay. Anything y'all can do, we can do better. And they went and did the same thing like a couple drives later. I'm like, oh, okay, Dolphins. All right, y'all playing that game. But anyway, um, but yeah, situational play calling. That's why a lot of Ravens fans are not calmed down because of stuff like that. Because, again, same stuff. Repeat offenders. Um, another thing, too, uh, decision making. And this really falls on John Harbaugh, decision making. And what I mean when I say that um, – well, again, with the fourth downs, I'm I'm not I don't, I'm not complaining about them going foot on the fourth downs. I know some people have though. Some people again, like some people said, hey, Ravens should have made the decision to take the points. All right, cool. That's their argument for that game, not mine. Because again, I didn't have a problem with any of the fourth downs that they went for it. But one of the issues in the game, pre-snap, uh, Tyreek Hill, he's matched up with. Uh, Jalen Armour Davis Shout out to my guy My guy sent me a message on uh, IG He said man Hey You got to get the pronunciation of Jalen's name right Because you keep seeing it wrong It's not uh, Armour it's, it's Armour Like Under Armour So then he slipped that little Under Armour promo in there like, Oh okay I got you But anyway So shout out to you But anyway So you got Jalen Armour Davis Matched up one on one With Tyreek Hill Jalen a rookie um, hasn't had a ton of reps. 
uh, especially, I mean, in the preseason, he, I don't even think he played in the preseason. Rookie. I mean, <laughs> a rookie against one of the best wide receivers in the league. And you look behind Jalen, and it ain't nothing but the end zone. Nothing but the end zone. And you would think as a coach, like, all right, you're going to recognize that as a coach, as a defensive coordinator, whichever. Tyreek Hill, who already has burned you. Tyreek Hill, who you have a lot of familiarity with. Tyreek Hill, who you know is probably the best playmaking wide receiver in the NFL, and he has been for years. A rookie? And then your, safe, your safeties are both in the box. You would think that whether John Harbaugh, whether Mike McDonald, they will recognize that because you got to be recognizing who Tyreek Hill is. You know who Jalen Waddle is, and if you ain't know who he was, he certainly made his name known in that game. But you would think that the coaching would recognize that, hold on, we, we got a rookie on Tyreek Hill, and he ain't got no help. But nope. No timeout. They let it ride. Decision making. Poor decision making. Repeat offenders. Repeat offenders. So, again, while it is early in the season, it's super early. Again, two games in, super early. They got 15 games left. Super early, but people just don't want to see the same mistakes. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs. A uh, special shout out to every Team Keep It Clean patron. This episode is going to feature uh, all Team Keep It Clean patrons who sent in questions <laughs> during the game. And we'll see if some tunes change. Uh, and then, of course, also after. But I appreciate everybody. Thank you. We are officially at uh, 58,000 subscribers right now. Uh, so much love to y'all, man. Much love to y'all for, for continuing to show a lot of crazy support. Um, Special shout out to the patrons. If you want to become a team, keep it clean patron. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't want to, don't worry about it. It's, it's okay. Um, I, I love y'all. And let's just get into the next question that came from uh, Imari. Imari said, my guy, it's halftime. <laughs> he might have he wanted to wait to send this one. But anyway, he said, it's halftime. Lamar just threw his third touchdown versus the Dolphins. And I can honestly say, this is the best I've seen the Baltimore Ravens look. The team looks complete, even with people out. Oof. Spoke too soon. Oof. Spoke a little too soon. But it's okay. It's all good. He said, um, last year I noticed Lamar Jackson didn't make many checks at the line of scrimmage, but the Dolphins zero blitz defense forces him to, and he has passed the test so far. Let me know what you think. Legote for MVP and cut the check. Oh, yeah. Cut that check. I had tweeted during the game, Ravens, cut the check. And that didn't change after just because the Ravens lost. That check still need to be cut, but he'll cross that road when they get there. Um, yeah, that's something that I, I noticed, too, during the game, like from jump. Um, Lamar was really, like, really taking firm control uh, of the offense. Like, there are some games where you'll see Lamar and he'll go walk up to the line of scrimmage and whatever, he'll call the play and whatnot. But then there's some other games where you'll see him, like, go into, like, a different mode. Where it's, it's this, this sense of urgency is like, it's, it's going like crazy. Uh, and I love it. And, and it was more of an up-tempo early on. I loved it. Loved it. And, and they were moving that ball early on. Uh, and, and it was great. It was great. So we just want to keep seeing it. Um, we we want to keep seeing consistency. Moving forward, we just want this offense to keep doing what they've been doing in a passing game. Uh, but then with the running game to come along, too. I know I, I've seen some people talk about, oh, y'all, this is what y'all Ravens fans wanted. Y'all wanted the Ravens to have a passing game. Oh, you got it now, but they ain't got no running game. Now, again, I got to correct that, though, because no, because for me, I can only speak for myself. But I, I continue to say I want the Ravens to put more emphasis on the passing game. 
much more emphasis on the passing game than I would always say because I know some people can take what you say and try to make it extreme when it's really not. I would always say I want them to put more emphasis on the passing game, but that does not mean that they should not be able to or they should not run the ball. Nobody said that at all. Nobody, nobody said, all right, Ravens, we want y'all to be able to have success in the passing game, but we want y'all to have a big decline in the running game. No, nobody said that. That's not what it is. We want them to be able to, to go to both. We want them to be able to rely on both. We want both, them to have both options consistently with their offense because that can make them that much more dangerous. That's it. That's it. And it's crazy, like the Ravens, they, um, they had a, several opportunities uh, to win this game by really having no running game, obviously outside of Lamar Jackson. But they, they weren't running the ball good. Lamar broke his 79-yard uh, touchdown runoff, but besides that, there's a bunch of nothing. I mean, Justice Hill, he had that nice run. And you know what? One of my guys sent me the uh, message on IG. He was like, man, Justice Hill, this should have been a touchdown. And I was like, no, no, it shouldn't have. It shouldn't have been no touchdown. And he was like, no, Justin, Justice, Justice Hill had so much green in front of him. And I was like, yeah, he did, but I don't, know, I don't see no touchdown. But then I looked at the play again. Then I looked at it again. Then I looked at it again. And I was like, oh, oh, wow. Oh, he, he actually could have had a touchdown. And if not, if the worst case scenario, if it wasn't a touchdown, he could have had a lot of yards. Um, so I, I had hit my guy back like 12 hours later. I was like, oh, no, I said, I, actually, you, you were right. Yeah, that, that, that probably should have been a touchdown. But um yeah we just we just want the Ravens to become uh more of a more of a complete team. Um and all they need to do, yeah, the running game should improve. Now will JK improve it that much? I don't know. Right now I, I can't say yes because the offensive line ain't been they ain't been making no holes. Um but also a lot of it depends on the scheme. If you just running right up the gut all the time, okay, well, you are going to get stopped. But so it's up to Ravens and their Greg Roman um, run game genius to really uh, op open up the run game. It's crazy. It's crazy to say that, right? Ain't it crazy to say that out loud? Like it's and it's all obvious up to the, the offensive line too. But the the Ravens and the offensive line and Greg Roman they need to open up the run game. It's crazy because we we're saying that about the run game, not the passing game. We cool with the passing game right now, but now we want the run game to be better. So hopefully when J.K. comes back. Stanley one day, eventually, maybe, who knows, uh, Nick Boyle, um, so we'll see, man, we'll see, but um, yeah, I, I, I've been loving how the passing game has been looking. Next question came from my guy, TJ, he said, yo, Engraven, you have to officially ban any Dolphins podcast members, after that guy said we would lose 35 to 10, and actually said he was serious, I told you before, I'm saying it again, the stars are aligned for a Raven Super Bowl victory, let's go. He sent this on Sunday during the game at 2.42 p.m. So we know how the rest of that went. Next question came from my guy Martin. He said our offensive line through two games is a big yikes. Worse than the league, Lamar makes them look better than what they are. They need to step up and Kyle Hamilton can tackle, but he needs to learn how to cover and quickly. Mm. Um, worse than the league, I don't know. Uh, run blocking has been bad. Pass blocking has been straight, though. Pass blocking, it's, it's like weird. It's like, who, who are these Ravens? Well, I guess Lamar knows who they are. But anyway, anyway um, offensive line, yeah, they, uh, the, the run blocking, is, is, it's been rough. Um, and as far as Kyle Hamilton, yeah, rookie mistakes, man. Rookie mistakes. Um, I know I've been seeing a lot of people just ready to throw Kyle Hamilton away. They're like, oh, man, this dude's trash. He's garbage. He's a bust. He's this. He's that. Uh, rookie mistakes. Um, but it's, it's up to uh, – like we talked about earlier, that that's up to coaching, to like, hey, if if he, it needs to be where, and of course he's gonna make mistakes, but it needs to be where, all right, if he missed time jumping the swatter pass down or something like that, if he missed a tackle, all right, something like that, if those were the issues, that's be like, okay, that's on Kyle Hamilton, got to work on technique, all right, cool, but if it's him not being lined up correctly. If his him being completely out of position, that's a coaching issue to me. Next question came from my guy, A.W. Juice, man. He said, LOL, I am disgusted. Hats off to the Dolphins, but come on now. We took our foot off the pedal, and I don't know what it is with Isaiah Likely, but 
He's just a preseason star. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He actually made a nice little catch. He what he had three catches the other day, I think. Then he he did of course have that that one drop, but that was, that was a little tough one. Um, it was a little behind him too though. But um, he he get there. It's again slowly but surely. It's, it's a process with him, man. It's been a process with him. Um, and and he's becoming more and more involved as the uh, the games go along. So I, I I think Isaiah likely will be fine. This is why I said I I, I remember somebody asked a, a preseason prediction for how many yards a touchdown for Isaiah likely. I said 600 yards. I said 600 yards. Um, but I said, like, maybe like a high amount of touchdowns when they start using them in the red zone. If they do, I think I said like seven or eight touchdowns. Though. So that's, oof, that's a lot. And hey, it could still happen. But um, yeah, I, I, ain't, I ain't tripping off Isaiah. Like, again, another rookie. Another rookie. I mean, I ain't, I ain't tripping off of them right now. Um, but we'll see how it goes, man. He said, that's all. He needs to change to 88, ditch that hideous 80 jersey. Harbaugh needs to go. <laughs> How you end it off like that? You just throw that in there randomly that Harbaugh needs to go. All right, next question came from my guy, Darrell. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well. Oh, yeah, everything is really good, man. Uh, definitely after that game yesterday, I was thinking we should just trade Tucker for a first round because we never used the man. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. He's saying he's saying to take those points. I can't argue it. Like I said, I, I ain't got no, I didn't have a problem with any of the fourth downs that they went for, but I can't argue that point either about taking the points. Uh, well, I can't argue against it. Uh, he said, this run game is not it. It's embarrassing at this point. In my opinion, the left side is so weak, specifically Ben Powers. I I've been seeing that conversation a lot. Uh, I've been seeing that a lot this, this week or after the game. I I've been seeing a lot of people talk about uh, Ben Powers specifically. Um, and again, I, I just, I didn't believe the Ravens when they kept propping him up. Oh, this is going to be the starter. He's projected to be the, in the starting lineup. I just thought they were going to try to trade him. I really did. I thought it was going to be Ben Cleveland. But anyway, uh, he said, and the defense in the second half, whew, don't get me started. I know it's still a young season, and I have faith the Ravens can get it together. And hopefully they will. It's about um, just not continuing to be repeat offenders. It's about correcting your mistakes, fixing your issues, and you're not going to have a perfect season. You ain't going to have no perfect season. It's still going to be times where they mess up, times where they give up big plays and whatnot. I mean, we would hope that they wouldn't be, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Like, I know um, you don't want to compare it to last year necessarily, especially with all the injuries and whatnot. But, again, with the injuries, they put people in the game who may have less skill than the guys in front of them. Um, but there's still no reason why. Because there were times last year, even though, yeah, you were missing people, there were still times last year when guys were running just wide open. Wide open. So it's like, man, what, what, what is going on? And that was Wink. Wink was a defensive coordinator left. Wink ain't there right now. And I know Mike McDonald, he, he learned a lot from Wink. So hopefully he can, we need to men in black this thing and go get a pen and make him erase everything that he learned from Wink. Next question. Well, it looks like a comment came from Armani. He said, it's interesting how for some of us, it appears a little weird for lefties to throw. Uh, this clip is super interesting and gave me a familiar version of quarterback play. Uh, got a credit to it, man. He did a heck of a job against us. Uh, and it was the, um, the clip that's been going around Twitter where somebody flipped it. We ain't going to put it on for copyright purposes, but somebody flipped uh, the two are throwing the ball. Um, and so they made it look like he was throwing right handed because they flipped the video around. And it was pretty cool. And it, yeah, it just it, it did change everything. It did make it look like normal and whatnot. Um, but yeah, shout out to Tua. Credit to Tua. I don't know if that was uh, Tua or that was Dan Marino who was throwing that ball. But yeah, he balled out, did his thing. And he got it to, I mean, a lot of people had questioned and made fun of his arm strength. Um, he got it the way it needed to be, though. Especially against the Ray. He got it to where it needed to be. To Tyreek Hill twice. Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle was doing a lot of that yak work. And I mean, like. <laughs> and for Tua, like, the, uh, the decision making was quick. Um, it was accurate. Uh, he moved around the pocket. Well, he even had to run out of the pocket sometimes. He, he made it happen, though. He made it happen. Uh, probably the best play, I think, from well, one of the best plays. He had a lot of best plays. But one of the best plays from him in that game came when uh, Broderick Washington was pressuring him. And it's Broderick Washington and Tua one-on-one. -on -one. I don't expect Broderick Washington to win, that, to win that matchup. But so Tua did a little spin move. And then he was able to refocus it, readjust his eyes. 
Look to the open receiver, boom, hit him, touchdown to 85. Next question, well, I guess really comment came from my guy B. Jones. He said, tough loss yesterday, but we will bounce back. Hey, straight like that. And the last question on this episode that came from all the patrons came from my guy Gareth. He said, hey, Engraven, I really would love to know how you and your family are doing. Hey, we, we doing pretty good, man. I appreciate you asking. He said, um, do you think we need to go and trade for a cornerback? Because we have a great team. And to go uh, on and make a run for a Super Bowl, I'm so sad at what we watched on Sunday. My daughter had to give me a huge hug uh, and say, go, go watch Engraven Channel. LOL. She's so cute. P.S. Uh, we will get through this, though. Love you, bro. Keep being great. Uh, Tink, keep it clean. Oh, no. We, we, we definitely, we're not great at all. Um, but I appreciate you. And shout out to your daughter, too. Um, trade for a cornerback. Uh, I mean, they could. They, they got some free agents that's out there, too. But would a new cornerback really change much? I mean, it could give you more quality uh, in the secondary. But if you still got guys running wide open, you had a most lockdown corner. And but if you got guys running wide open, guys are gonna be running wide open. So I, I think uh, coaching just really got to take a look in the mirror. Um, they they really got to take a look in the mirror and figure out like how to scheme this thing up the right way and just to have more self awareness. I would say more self awareness uh, of the scheme uh, of maybe issues with the scheme because even in a Jets game, the Jet those wires sometimes those wires he was wide open. Especially in the middle of the field in the Jets game, but this 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 game they were more open on it, the sides of the field. Um, but they they would just drop they would drop a lot of passes. They dropped significant passes too. And it's like oof. Okay. But anyway, um, and again I know it, this this day and age of NFL you're not gonna just be this lockdown defense. So it'd be unfair to expect that. But for guys to just consistently be wide open, it's gonna happen when guys get open. Uh, cornerback could get beat or whatnot. Cornerback might slip. It, it happens. But for guys to consistently be like wide open, wide open, wide, especially in clutch time and clutch situations, and to have stuff like what happened on Sunday to happen, that's 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 unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And coaches know that. They know that. Like they know they know like oh man that yeah that, that's on me. That, that, or they should know that. Um. So yeah, hopefully Ravens just do a lot of adjustments. Um. And do fixes. And it's like. Doesn't it have to be anything drastic? I right, just getting guys lined up in the right spots, man. And just just realizing what's happening more on that field. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to Shout out to Graven.